Well, good morning, everyone. What a gratifying turnout this morning. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Um, uh, as the slide indicates, today's topics topic is uh, the creation of a virtual Zoom studio using Open Broadcaster Software Studio, which is a completely free application. Uh, it's a piece of software that runs on either Windows or Mac with equal aplomb and uh, totally open source. And it allows you to create what amounts to a sophisticated video studio on your computer. It gives you capabilities that are not uh, an order of magnitude less, anyway, than the capabilities that the people in the network trailer at Monday Night Football have. It allows you to create incredibly sophisticated video uh, productions, either live or recorded. And it works, as you can see here, wonderfully with Zoom. It is, uh, it gives you the capability to create all sorts of amazing effects during your uh, Zoom meetings. You can switch between video sources with great ease. And I am going to spotlight myself now so that uh, I'll be full screen for you. Uh, you'll want to, if you haven't already done so for this presentation, you'll want to put yourself in speaker mode for uh, in Zoom. The little view button is course in the upper right hand corner of your zoom screen and if you click on that you get the option for speaker or gallery view and many, and most of us I think in meetings spend most of our time in gallery view so if you select speaker view it'll work better today you'll be able to see what I'm doing in many cases a lot better so I can put myself full screen I can select video sources that's a live camera pointing out my back window to Lake Ponderé, Northern Idaho. I can share my secondary screens with you. Some of them I can't share right now because I'm using them with OBS, but uh, I can put that, and I can also create multi-source scenes in OBS that uh, superimpose one video source on top of another. There's my little document camera and I can have myself in this frame while I'm doing that. My screen that has my um, uh, PowerPoint slides on it right now. This is a another video source, a, a, a pan tilt zoom camera that uh, shows but you don't have to have anything like the hardware setup that I'm showing here. You can do OBS with much less hardware than this. I'm just I just use every opportunity to add to my toy box. Um, you can even use your smartphone as a camera with OBS and have a sorry. Try not to give too much seasickness. But I can use the smartphone as a mobile video source and carry it around if I'm in a larger room or in a classroom or something like that. I can carry it around and utilize. Uh, good question, Nicola. Do you need more than one camera? Well, you can certainly get by with one camera. OBS will work. But you would miss a lot of the capabilities of OBS if you didn't have multiple cameras. It's designed to allow you to select between multiple video sources that you actually display to your students in Zoom. And you can even put, uh, as you can in Zoom, you can put video or still images behind you that are recorded. This is the confluence of the Madison and the Jefferson Rivers to form 
flowing off to the right to form the Missouri River. This is the exact point in the North American continent where the Missouri River is first named as such. The great, the longest river in North America. Um, and the, the highway that Lewis and Clark used to reach the, the Rocky Mountains. So it, you just have a vast number of instructional opportunities using OBS. And what I'm going to do today, <laughs> greatly daring, <laughs> is I am going to show you how simple and easy it is to acquire OBS, install it on your computer, configure it, and use it. Because, and for some of this, I'm going to be, uh, for some of this presentation, I'll be using Zoom screen sharing. So let me do that right now. I'm going to share my Zoom, my uh, OBS window with you, my OBS screen. There's OBS. Oops. I meant to join this meeting on my laptop so that I know you're seeing what I'm seeing, what I think you're seeing. Another useful trick vis-a-vis -vis Zoom. I forgot to do that. Just a second, let me get myself set up here. All right, so yes, I do in fact. Uh, uh, you are in fact seeing my Zoom, my OBS screen. And I'm going to drop out of that now. I'm going to stop my camera here. I'm going to close OBS. <clears throat> and I'm going to uninstall it from my computer. Programs, programs and features. This is how that's done in Windows, of course. And I just need to find OBS in alphabetical order. There it is. I'm going to uninstall it. Yes, I do want to do that. Uh, I'm going to tear out all my user settings, so I have to reconfigure it from scratch. And I'll uninstall it. Well, it doesn't take long to trash all that work. <laughs> Okay, so no more OBS. Now what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to reinstall it. Uh, let me stop this share and share my PowerPoint slide now in the, in the usual way without me in front of it. I've just eliminated that capability from OBS but, or from uh, this computer temporarily. But let me go to the next screen. We'll talk a little bit about exactly what OBS does for you. And the diagram's always useful. OBS uh, can be thought of as a video switcher, a live video switcher. What a live video switcher does is it takes video inputs from a variety of video sources. It can t they can be webcams, uh, either external or built into your laptop. It can be external cameras that are not usually thought of as webcams. You can use uh, professional or semi-professional camcorders or studio cameras or whatever with, uh, with OBS as well. And you can use video sources like the video that's being sent to your computer screen. You can, OBS can intercept that and display that video uh, in OBS as well as on the monitor in front of you. And all of this goes into OBS and then OBS allows you to select which single source or even multiple sources at the same time that you want to display an output from OBS. And OBS allows you to 
um, output to three different types of destinations. You can output video to a live stream. OBS allows you to have your own television network. Okay, think about that for a minute. You could schedule a, video, a, a television program that you were the star of every week or every other day at a particular time, and you could put that uh, a, a URL, a web link to that, out to a, some interested population. In my case, that population would be vanishingly small, but <laughs> maybe you, you know, maybe you have something to say that people all over the world might like to hear. And they can tune in at that time by just clicking on a link, and bam, is, you have a broadcast studio live worldwide and all of that can be done for free did i mention this is free software and the streaming the live streaming can be done for free through uh, uh, services like youtube or facebook or twitch which is one favored by gamers and so on but it can be used for other things you can also record whatever uh, OBS is putting out right to your hard drive and capture that video and put it online and, and allow people to view it at any time. I use, mostly use OBS now when I'm screencasting, when I'm recording my computer screens and talking about it and so on, which I do a lot of. OBS is the, is the simplest, quickest way to do that I have now. Or as we're going to deal with today, we can do live streaming, we can record, but we can also use the output of OBS as a video input in Zoom. And the, um, this gives us tremendous flexibility in our Zoom classes with students. So this is what we're going to focus on today. This is the output option that we're going to focus on today. So let's get started actually doing this. How do you get OBS? All you do is click on a link to obsproject.com. Um, now that I'm thinking about this, let me pull up, oop, that's not what I want it pull up my PowerPoint presentation and I will share my slide deck with you here. I'm going to put that in the chat tool here. Just a second. <laughs> I have to hit enter here in a moment. Um, let's see. All right, there's a link uh, to a shared version of this PowerPoint presentation if you want to have access to the links later on. But all I have to do is click here. He said. There we go. <laughs> I had to ask it twice. And this is what comes up. The home page for OBS Studio. You want to take a good look at that. <laughs> uh, if you're clicking on links on the internet, you want to make sure you get to the right place. The URL and your um, address line here should say just obsproject.com to make sure you get the actual software and not some Trojan virus that's going to eat your system. Um, OBS will run on Windows, Mac, or Linux. Didn't mention Linux if you happen to be one of those people <laughs> who thinks that everybody else's computer is worthless. Um, but I'm using a Windows machine here, so I'll go to the Windows option, click on it, and bam, just that fast. It says, okay, here's the installer. This is all you need for, to, for, uh, for OBS. 
Uh, I'm going to save that somewhere where I can find it later. My downloads folder, probably. And it's not a huge file. It doesn't take but a minute to download, even on a relatively modest uh, internet connection that is being heavily used at this moment. And in a moment, a little circle will flash. Okay, that's I've got the installer, the the uh, compiled software for OBS. All I have to do to install it, in uh, in this case, in in Chrome, is to double click on this little biscuit down here. Okay. Uh, Windows is asking me, do you want to allow this? <laughs> it, it won't share that. Yeah, sure. Okay, and here's the installer dialog. It's usual stuff. All you do is take the defaults, pretty much. Click next to continue. Oh, I could have figured that out. Uh, yeah, here's the legality and stuff. This is open source software. You can pretty much do anything you want to with it. And then uh, install. It tells you how much space it's going to take and so on, which is not much. And uh, install. The installation will only take a few moments in most cases. Once the install has finished, you can click the finish button here. And if you leave things at the defaults, this will immediately launch OBS Studio. When OBS first starts, you'll be asked to run a basic auto configuration wizard. Since in this set of tutorials, we're assuming that we'll be using OBS primarily for the virtual camera output to zoom. We'll make that, I'll make that selection. You can always come back and configure streaming and recording settings later on. After making that selection, we'll click Next and then Apply Settings. And OBS is now installed and ready for further configuration. Okay, so here's what OBS looks like when it first loads. Um, the This is your, obviously, your video preview window here, where you're going to see the output that OBS is going to be sending wherever you want to put it. You have an audio mixer here that I'm not going to be worrying with today because uh, typically I, when I let Zoom handle the audio in a Zoom session where I'm using OBS. There are some tricks you can do with the audio mixer that are fun, but they're not essential to using OBS with Zoom. Uh, I have a little control menu over here on the right that we'll see in use periodically. Not much. There's not much you have to fiddle with here. Most of what we're going to be talking about for the rest of the after, or rest of the morning, it is morning, isn't it, um, is the sources box here and the scenes box. We're going to learn how to, this is where you configure OBS to make it work for you. So, uh, let's get started with that. Let me go back to my PowerPoint here and change my screen share to that screen. I'm still using Zoom exclusively to share screens with you and so on because I just <laughs> tore the living daylights out of my OBS installation. Let's see if I can get it back. Um, we've, okay, we've done this. We've installed OBS. It's running over there on the other screen. So what are we going to have to do? Well, the first thing we have to do is connect some video sources to it. Imagine just taking a cable from the video source and plugging it into the back of a switcher. That's what we're the virtual equivalent of what we're going to do here. And the video sources that OBS can see and, and can be connected to are things that are connected, are video sources that are connected to your computer using an OB, uh, using a U, uh, USB connection, 
like a webcam is the classic example. It can use the, or an internal webcam, which is connected using the same sort of circuitry inside the computer. Um, it, this could be a webcam built into your laptop, or it could be an external webcam like the venerable um, Logitech C920 webcam, which is still one of the best webcams on the market and can be had for $60 or so from Amazon or a USB document camera, like the little IPVO document camera here, which gives you so much capability. Uh, it allows you to basically replace the whiteboard hanging on your wall in the classroom in a virtual Zoom session. We'll see that demonstrated in a little bit. Okay. But you're not limited. Question? Can you get the name of that camera, that webcam? Uh, this webcam or yes. the document camera? No, the first one. This one. That is, let me put that in the chat tool. That is a Logitech C920. There's actually a C920X series. There's about five or six webcams in that series, and they're all good. But this is the original, the C920. It's been around for about 10 years, but it's still one of the best and most recommended external webcams in the business. And you can get it on Amazon. Just search for Logitech C920. There it is. And um, it'll pop right up on Amazon. And depending on how they're feeling that day, it'll be anywhere from about 60 to about 70 bucks. And they can have, and they're available now. In March of 2020, they vanished. <laughs> Everyone that had been made in the world vanished instantly as everybody went online. But they're back. You can, you can get them again, and usually not for uh, scalper prices. Okay, thank you. That, that what you needed? Exactly, it is, thank you. Great, 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 great. Okay, but you can, you're not limited to USB webcams like this. If you really wanna crawl down the rabbit hole some distance, you can hook all sorts of professional or semi-professional cameras to OBS. You can hook them into your computer and then OBS can see them. And you can do so using a very inexpensive little uh, video capture device. And this will work with any, just about any camera that has an HDMI output, uh, high definition media interface output, which is the output uh, off your your Blu-ray deck, your Blu-ray uh, player, or um, your if you have a little camcorder uh, that you use to take videos of your kids. <laughs> Remember when we had the, had to use those instead of our smartphones? Um, but something that has a little bit better lens and things like that than the smartphone, even the better smartphones do. The, anything that has an HDMI output on it. I've hooked, playing around, I've hooked my Roku um, uh, TV box, the, you know, my streaming TV box to OBS and played movies <laughs> across it. That's a little bit of a copyright violation, so I probably shouldn't admit that. And I, I, I just did it to see if I could do it. And it worked like a charm because it just has an HDMI output on it. So anything with an HDMI output, you can plug into this thing here and then it plugs into a USB port on your computer and it looks like a webcam to Windows or Mac OS. And then OBS can pick it up and it can be used as a source in OBS. And that can give you some uh, really neat possibilities for um, instructional uses of these cameras. Dave, could you mention switchers if you use multiple devices? You talked very briefly about a switcher. Just, well, I don't, don't want to get you too far off base, but. Not at all, not at all. OBS is the switcher. I, I guess I'm. I guess I, what I'm thinking about is if I had let's say hypothetically four inputs, you know, I, right. I, I, I'm now going to advance to OBS <laughs> right. a, year from, a year from now. But if I had four devices coming in and I don't have that much um, 
I don't have that many plugs on my computer, right? Oh, so uh, so many, how, some I'm going to have to. Excellent question. Uh, how how are you going to get more than one or two devices in, particularly if you're using something like a, a MacBook or something like that that has like one <laughs> uh, little bit of USB-C port on it? How are you going to do that? Well, you're going to do that with, that's a great question, with a USB hub. Something like this, though I've, with OBS, I would recommend a powered hub, one that has its own power supply rather than takes power off the computer. Um, you can get them from Amazon with, uh, let's see if I can find the one I, I'm using here. That I use the eight port version of that one. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah. This is the one I like, 29 bucks. You plug that um, USB, oh, and you can get versions of this that have the USB-C cables as well. If you're using a MacBook, you can get one with a USB-C. And then you can have um, what are called USB-A, <laughs> or this, the old USB ports. And you can have up to eight. This one's actually got nine ports on it. And um, you can plug in as much as you like. Okay, that's kind of what I thought, but thank you very much. You bet. Great question. All right. So you can pretty much hook. I've had half a dozen cameras running on OBS at the same time, plus other input sources as well. So it's, uh, you're not really limited much. Uh, there are other types, and as I mentioned, there are other types of video sources. You can get into OBS and then out into Zoom. Uh, the notably display capture, which is what I'm doing with Zoom right now. I'm capturing the signal going to my monitor and sending that out to you. We can do that through OBS as well, and you can do lots of tricks with it that you can't do with Zoom. It gives you a lot more flexibility. There is one minor drawback <laughs> to, uh, uh, or minor uh, extra requirement if you're going to use display capture, live display capture with OBS, and that's that you have to have it two monitors, one to run OBS on and one to capture the display of. It won't work with that. This won't work with one monitor. So um, that is not much of a an impediment these days. <coughs> you can uh, get a second monitor for as little as a hundred bucks or, or maybe a lot less. If you have a local computer store, you go down and I got a bunch of old monitors sitting in the back that are taking up space and they still work fine, but they can't sell them for new and they can't get rid of them. People are, because new monitors are not that expensive anymore. So you could probably go down and pick one up for a few tens of dollars at your local computer store. And then you can plug, and plugging, if you're using a laptop as your primary computer, you can just plug the, 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 out, the external monitor into the, uh, the projector port, the, uh, the external video port on your, that all laptops have these days. Or um, if it's a desktop computer, the vast majority of desktop computers these days have at least one extra video output on them that you can um, plug a monitor into, a second monitor into. And there are workarounds if, it, if they don't. So the, it's not that difficult to do. I, I occasionally do a, a session on how to hook a second or third monitor to your computer, uh, both, either a laptop or a desktop. And we have uh, recordings of those sessions on our open on demand site. So this is not a major hurdle, either expense-wise or technical-wise. And it does give you a lot of capability with OBS that you would miss otherwise. It's not essential, but it, the, the neatest tricks really require this. You can also just put a media source behind you, a, a local video file that you have on your computer that can just play behind you kind of like Zoom's virtual backgrounds. But again, you can do it through 
OBS and you have more flexibility and more capability if you do it that way. So these are examples of video sources that we can use with OBS. So how do we get them connected? <laughs> Well, it's, it's not difficult. It, the process can be a little problematic. Well, when I say problematic, it can be a little twitchy. Uh, I've been known to have to restart, you know, close OBS and restart it and maybe plug and unplug the video source once or twice. Usually not, but some sources are more, um, shall we say, uh, compliant than others. So you just have to be willing to try it multiple times. And this is definitely an exception to the old rule about, uh, you know, the definition of insanity, trying the same thing twice and expecting a different result e uh, each time. <laughs> well, with OBS, sometimes that's, that's the path to success. So you just have to be a little patient, but it always works in the end. Let's see how compliant OBS is going to be today. <laughs> All right, let me go to, uh, let me change my screen that I'm sharing here. Another thing, of course, that really helps in Zoom meetings, uh, or I should say having multiple monitors helps, even if you're not using OBS, it helps in Zoom presentations for sure. Okay, so now you're seeing OBS, my OBS screen. So... How do I get started here? How do I add my first source or connect my first source to OBS? Well, I, not surprisingly, I use this sources box here, which is uh, in the, uh, the lower third of the screen here. And let's, at the bottom of that box, I have a series of little controls. Actually, let me move this over. I'm good. I'm good. Never mind. Um, I have a series of little controls at the bottom of the box here. And the ones I use, the one I use most of the time is the plus symbol. It implies add. And that's how I add a source to OBS. I just uh, click that plus button. And I get this intimidating looking menu and this is the point at which i went to youtube and started looking around oh my god what do i <laughs> what if i pick the wrong one am i is my computer gonna melt no there's nothing you can do nothing you do with obs can possibly have any negative impact on your computer okay it's not making any changes that are going to affect any other software or anything like that so uh you don't have to be cautious about trying things with it but this menu is pretty extensive and understanding what these different types of video sources are about takes some research but fortunately there's only one or two of them that you really need to worry about unless you really get uh, get interested in playing with OBS and decide to uh, to try everything it can do like capturing yourself zapping Klingons um, in your uh, gameplay. But more often than not, we're going to have one of, we're going to pick one of two options out of this menu. A video capture device, which includes all cameras and anything else that would come in, that would feed video in through a USB port on your computer. Or display captures, which I just mentioned. And we're going to start with the video capture devices. We're going to put a few of those on here. Now these cameras or what are, or uh, Blu-ray players or <laughs> your Roku box or whatever that you've got connected to um, your computer have to be connected via a USB cable or that little adapter that I showed you, which converts HDMI output into USB. Uh, input for the computer, those things have to be connected before you can set this up. So you have to do those physical connections first, but you've probably got those plugged in already if you're using them already. So we'll select video capture device as our first option here. And we get a little dialog box and it asks us to name the device that we're going to connect. And um, the first 
device I'm going to connect is the camera that's on me. Not the one that you may be seeing off to the side of my shared zoom screen right now. One thing you got to watch, once you uh, connect a camera to OBS, you can't use it outside of OBS. At least not if OBS is running, okay? So I have purposely, uh, this camera you're seeing me on right now, if you're seeing me in the, above and to the right of, your shared, of my shared screen, is just a little Logitech C920 webcam that I'm not going to connect to OBS <laughs> so that I can uh, use it before I get OBS set up. So this one is going to be my the camera that I use primarily on me. I can call that uh, the I Love Me camera. I'll remember that. <laughs> So I, I can call it Fred if I want to. It doesn't, OBS doesn't care as long as I remember what that means. All right, so then I just name it and click OK. And OBS just randomly looks for cameras that are attached to my computer and pulls one up. That doesn't happen to be the one I want. Um, so I'm going to search for it. And this camera happens to be one of those uh, semi-professional cameras that is connected to the computer uh, through that little dongle that I showed you, the little HDMI to USB dongle. And I happen to have two of those connected, and they both have the same name, so I don't know which one is which. So I'm just going to click on one of them and see. That's not the one I wanted. That's the camera pointed out my back window. No harm done. Let's try the other USB 3.0 capture. That's it. <laughs> That's my I Love Me camera. Fine. Looks fine. It's working. I just click OK. And now the I Love Me camera is an entry in my sources box. I've connected it. What would my laptop camera be called? laptop camera <laughs> or you call it I, the I love me camera because it's probably pointed at you or anything uh, it would um, oh and what would the name that pops up automatically when you search for sources in uh, OBS could be different things uh, integrated camera is a common common one or built-in camera or laptop camera or whatever, it will be readily recognizable as such. Good question. I misunderstood there for a second, but yeah, good question. Okay, so I've got my first source. It was, if I weren't blathering on about it, <laughs> that would have taken uh, five seconds to add that source. Let's add another one just to see how. Uh, add. And I'll, let's add another camera or video capture device. The only reason they don't say camera there is that it could be something other than a camera. Like I said, like a Blu-ray player or something. So I'll click that. And now I see I've got it. There's my I Love Me camera. It knows I've got that one. But now I'm creating a new one. Now let me add that camera that's pointing at the lake. I'm going to call that lake camera. I could call it Fred again if I wanted to. And OK. And that's the other USB 3.0 capture camera. <laughs> there it is. Looks good. A little cloudy today. We may be getting some rain. A little while we may be able to see the rain come over the lake and, and come across. That's really pretty neat up here. But <laughs> that's neither here nor there. OK. Now I've got two sources, two cameras. I've also got a video capture device. I've also got a document camera. And if I OK that, there it is. It's, keep, it's been wanting to add that one from the get-go, so let's let it do so. There is a little 
uh, and, and this is fine. And then I can just say, okay, and move on. I will use this to illustrate a uh, possible extra complication that you might have with some cameras. I can look at that and I can see that the aspect ratio on that is about four across by three down. That's not high definition. High definition is 16 by nine, 16 across by nine down uh, ratio. So I know this camera, but I know this camera can do high definition. I read the little book that came with it and it's not doing that by default. Some cameras don't utilize their maximum resolution by default. And, um, but you can tell OBS to ask the camera to do so. To do that, I just scroll down and it says, and this, you don't have to do this sort of thing, but if I want to get full capability out of this camera, I'm going to go to the setting that says resolution slash FPS type. And I'm going to set it from device default, which is not the best it can do for some reason, to custom. Now, you know, when you start customizing things, you're, you're <laughs> maybe getting into trouble, but let's try it. And then the <laughs> first thing that happens is that the image goes away. It's, oh God, I've broken it. No, you haven't broken it. You just have to go to the next setting, which is resolution. And you have to know what the different resolutions mean. Uh, to 2048 by 1536 is so-called 4K. High definition, which is the best this camera is capable of, is 1920 pixels. And here we're measuring in pixels, little bright dots on the screen. 1920 pixels across by 1080 pixels down so-called 1080p. If I click that, then it comes back and notice it's wider now and it's sharper, but it would have worked fine. It would have worked more than well enough if I just left it alone, but I, I can do tricks like that if I want to. Then I just click okay and I've added my third source. Oh gosh, one more source. Well, let's do one more. This repetition is the soul of learning. Let's do this multiple times so you get comfortable with it. I can add one more camera I happen to have here. Actually, it's not a camera. It is a non-camera type video capture device, which has a camera attached to it. And I'm going to say, okay. And the option I want is called black magic design. This is what I used to use in Zoom meetings before I figured out how to use OBS and then found, and found a free way to do this. This is a little hardware switcher that has other video sources attached to it. So uh, Rick, in, uh, with reference to that uh, you know, situation where you had more video sources than you wanted, uh, that you wanted to attach to OBS than you had USB ports. Another option is to attach a little hardware switcher to your, o to your USB port on your computer and plug the HDMI cables, the video cables from your various cameras or video sources into that. So that's what I have here. And I have attached to that a, a nice little pan tilt zoom camera that's useful when I'm doing these uh, video studio type sessions. So I'm going to select that one. And there's my pan tilt zoom camera, which I can control with a little joystick. And there are other things attached. Nope. I, actually, I don't think I have anything else attached to this switcher right now. So that's another trick that you can do. Or I could plug that camera directly into a USB port on the computer. I just have it separate so I can use it for other things. Anyway, um, 
and that one is oops and I didn't think to rename it so let me I can always right click on that and rename the thing since I forgot to name it something other than video capture device we'll call this so Dave you're just using that black magic because because you've used it in the past it's just an ex, uh, another thing right yeah you found exactly. this is basically doing all the stuff that black magic did but since you already own it since I already own it, yeah. I paid 300 bucks for it. I'm going to use it. And yeah. it does allow me to conveniently hook multiple. I can hook four more sources into OBS using one USB port that way. And you can control all that without using the Blackmagic software. You just go through uh, OB. I just use the buttons on the. Uh, here's yeah. the. Yeah, that's right. It, that's, yeah, I, I, I'm sort of remotely familiar with that piece piece of equipment. Yeah. So you're just hitting the switches, turning on what you like. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Here's, here's the buttons on the thing. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, this was the best thing since sliced bread until I got OBS. Yeah. Now I never use it. I've been really tempted. I've been really tempted to get one of those. I've been watching those for a oh, while. So great. you're saving me a lot of money right now. That switcher, the capability represented by this switcher five years ago cost $6,000. Yeah. Now it's 300. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. It's television quality. I mean, it's just like for it's, everybody else that doesn't I, know that piece of equipment. I mean, it's what they, like you said, what they use for, um, you know, Monday night football. Exactly. It's a high definition device. Thanks. Yeah. So text, you know, I don't know, maybe something will obsolesce OBS next week. <laughs> New technology will come out. But at least with OBS, you haven't got any money invested in it. You can just yeah. do it. It's just a little more time to learn whatever the next new thing is. But um, I do love it, though. It's I like pressing the buttons. It makes me feel powerful. You know? <laughs> All right. So let's go back to the I, I love me camera there. Oh, no, I haven't set that up yet. Okay, so these are my sources, uh, my actual physical camera sources. Other sources can be added, as we mentioned, notably uh, display capture sources. This is whatever's displaying on one of your monitors. And again, you can't, uh, to really make good use of this technique, you have to have at least two monitors. So you, you have to have two monitors. A third one is icing, but two is plenty. Um, to set that up is even simpler than the cameras. I just select display capture source and I name it and I'm going to, I have three screens going from left to right. I'm going to name this, uh, use screen three. can't seem to spell screen sorry you just never know when it's gonna hit my age all right okay and now OBS automatically finds all the monitors that are attached to my computer I select the one uh, leave capture method at automatic don't ever take anything autom off automatic unless you know what you're doing or something's not working um, I've got displays one, two, and three here. And I can select any of them as display capture sources. The one I typically use is my third display, the one over on the right. So I'm going to select that one. That's the one that currently has my PowerPoint slides on it. And that's what I was displaying my PowerPoint slides through when we first started the session today, before I cleaned OBS off and started all over again. So I'll select that one and okay. And there's screen three and that's um, uh, it's not showing on the screen right now because it's not showing in my preview window here because I am, uh, I'm sorry, it is showing. What am I, what am I saying? Yeah, it's the one at the top here. All right. Sorry. Lost situational awareness. So I have 
just that fast, I have five sources set, and we're not even at an hour. We're just barely at an hour in, hour in. I've got at least 50% of the setup done. Let's see, is there anything else I want to show you? Yeah, let's do a one other source type that I did mention in the PowerPoint slide, which is a, a local video file that I can use as an input source. And, and OBS will play the video file and display it on the screen automatically. This is an incredibly well-designed and talented piece of software. Lots of very bright people worked on it for free because for the love of the, of the uh, art. So I can add a media source. This is fun. And I'm just going to call this um, Missouri Source. Because that's the subject of the video I'm going to use. Click OK. And by default, it assumes I'm looking for a local video file. That's the only thing I've ever been able to get to work. And usually, if I'm going to use it in OBS, I'm going to have the file loop. Unless it's a really long video, I'm probably going to have it loop. So it plays over and over and over. When it gets to the end, it just starts over at the beginning and keeps playing. Um, then I'm going to browse for the video file that I want to use. So I go looking, and let's see, D, 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 am I go to my videos folder here. That's where I'm going to find this that I want. And I made a folder for these files that I did the other day. And here's, there's the one that I want. I'd have to look at that <laughs> if I hadn't already done this already. But I'll take that one. This works. Uh, you can use most common video file types for this. I've got MPEG-4 videos here and Apple uh, video files, MOVs or movie files from Apple. It came off my iPhone just as is. I can just take the file, download it from my iPhone onto my computer, and uh, the video file and use it in OBS without any massaging or con reconverting or transcoding or whatever. And it'll handle most other common video file types as well. So I'll just take this Confluence video here and open and click OK. You don't see anything uh, ominously. You don't see anything in the uh, in the preview window here. But if I say OK, there's the the video file. So Dave, um, yes. for this most recent one, the media source, you don't need a separate monitor for that? Oh, no, you don't need a separate monitor for that. Very good question. I should have said that. Absolutely right. So you can put something, a video, behind you without having a second monitor. You just have to have it pre-recorded and on a file in your local hard drive. Uh, this illustrates something about um, uh, how you can adjust video display in OBS. Notice that this is only partially covering up my screen three here. It's covering it up because it's above screen three in this list here. So it's laying on top of it. But it's not covering it completely because the aspect ratio of this file is uh, a little different than the standard 16 by 9 that I've been using in high definition. This is actually a, a 4K video file. Amazing what your, that video studio in your pocket will shoot now. Jeez. And um, so I can, I get this, this red border around that video playing. Uh, shows me that it's active, and that's normal. 
but I also have handles in the center of each face of the rectangle and at the corners, little squares. And if I mouse over them, I get a double headed arrow and I can click and drag and adjust the size, the display size of that video. And I can click and I can move the video window around. So I get the, the part of the video that's actually displaying is adjusted for me. So we'll see that again in a minute, but there's the Missouri river being formed that day. All right. And you can see the file playing here in the OBS interface and you can pause it at any time and restart it whenever you like from your OBS window. This is another reason why it's convenient to have at least two monitors because you can have OBS up on one monitor and whatever you want to show to the rest of the world on another monitor and uh, you know you have the the man behind the curtain and the show outside the curtain at the same time visible to you. Could, could you do the same with multiple microphones? I, I know you're not going to touch on sound but but I, I, I'm going to gather that this would we'd be able to sort of control let's say a speaker with a lavalier while I'm sitting in the back of the room running the program or, you know, or some combination. Actually, that, vi that audio mixer doesn't do that good a job of that. Okay. Uh, whether with OBS or with um, Zoom directly. But there is an application. Uh, <laughs> of if course. You use another application that is also, well, it, it's uh, donationware. They try to guilt you into giving them a a minimal donation. I think they asked for like 15 bucks or something like that, but you can use it for free if you want to. It just depends on your uh, conscience. But there's an application called, uh, are you running a PC or a Mac? I'm a Mac guy. Okay. Oh, look at that grimace. There, at there that. aren't, we, we're still not, fighting this battle, you and I. <laughs> it's just not a really good free okay. alternative to what I'm about to mention. On the Mac right now, there used to be, but it's no longer being supported. There are some modestly priced ones, you know, twenty or thirty dollars that will do the we'll job. Give, well, give us your free PC one, and then I'll. But the free PC one is called Voice Meter, and it's spelled idiosyncratically. Let me uh, put that in the chat tool. Voice Meter with two E's. Oh, you can just Google that and it'll pop right up and you can download it and it will take multiple microphones and mix their in, their inputs together and output the, the mixed audio. There's a, a free, the free version will handle two microphones. There's a version that's about 20 bucks that will handle, I think up to half a dozen simultaneously and it's a little mixing console thank you thank but it's you. all in software okay and i thank do you. have a tutorial on the on-demand site on how to install and configure it and it does work but uh, another thing about microphones to remember as well is that microphones can be shared simultaneously by multiple applications so if you're using your microphone, say with Zoom, it can work with OBS at the same time, or it can work with another uh, piece of another application. You don't have the problem you have with cameras, which can only be used by one application at a time. They, cameras can't be shared. So if OBS is using a camera and you have OBS running, you can't use that camera with native with zoom which is why i'm using my old webcam here right now and why i didn't add that to obs as a source i certainly could but then i'd have to use obs as my video source in zoom and i'm not ready to demonstrate that yet so just all sorts of little tricks you learn and <laughs> And I, obviously I learned that by doing it wrong and, uh, and having a source disappear or, or not work and having Zoom video not work. So, but it's 
All I had to do was turn OBS off and everything worked fine. So you, you learn these things. Okay, we've got a bunch of sources. That's more than enough. We could keep hey, hey. sources. Please, uh, Albert. Yeah. Um, on the, you, you name the sources uh, differently. If I change my mind, I don't like to call that lake camera. I want to call it something else. Is it a way to, I can change? Absolutely. Change All you have to do, yep, you're seeing this, is go to the um, source in question, just highlight it by pointing at it, and then right click with a PC mouse, or if you have a two button mouse, right click. If you have a single button mouse, hold down the command key on the Mac and click, and you get a configuration menu for that source which has way more options in it than you want to miss. There are so many, this, this OBS has so many professional capabilities and so on that I never use, but there is one there that's handy if you look close called rename. <laughs> so you just go to rename and click and the name of the source in the sources box is highlighted and you can just wipe it out and name it something else. Thank you, thank you. And press enter and that's all there is to it. <laughs> okay, so we've got sources, but we can't really use them yet. Only the source that's at the top of the list is visible. And to change a what's showing on the screen here and what's output it. And whatever you see here is what OBS is going to output to whatever output uh, destination you choose. The only way to change what source is being seen here right now is to put a source on top of this list. Like if I want my me camera back at the top, I have to highlight it and I can use the little up caret here to move it up the list, and when it gets to the top, then it appears. But that's really cumbersome. You don't want to have to do that when you want to switch between two, uh, switch among sources in OBS. You just want to be able to press a single button and have it happen, or, or do a single mouse click and have a new source appear. So to really use OBS, you have to create what are called scenes. And you can switch between scenes very easily just by clicking on the scene you want. You start off when OBS first installs with a single scene just named scene. That is a placeholder scene that contains all of your sources that you add, that you connect to OBS. You leave that alone <laughs> for obvious reasons. But you, in the scenes box here, over in the lower left, you have another plus sign. So we can create scenes. So if I want to be able to pull this camera up, uh, the one that you're seeing on the screen there, the, um, the I Love Me camera, quickly, I make a scene that contains that source. And this is the hardest thing probably to internalize about OBS, why you have to make, once you have all these sources in there, why you also have to make scenes that contain the sources um, in order to really utilize them efficiently in a live situation. So let's make a scene, our first, our second scene. We got a box that's similar to what we've seen before, the add scene box, and we give it a name. And I'm going to start off with single source scenes. That is a scene that accepts video only from one source. That of course applies that there are, implies that there are multi-source scenes. And in fact, there are. And we'll see how to create those next. But single source scenes for starters. It's nice to have, to be able to pull up any source that you have attached to, the, to OBS by itself. Quickly and easily. So the first scene, the first source I'm going to, single source scene I'm going to add is for my I Love Me camera. And since I changed the name there, I can call this scene I Love Me. 
you can't, a quirk in the way OBS works, you can't name the scene exactly the same name as a source. OBS won't accept it. It would get confused. So I have to change this a little bit. So I, 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 I called this me camera, so now I'm going to call this scene I love me camera. And I'll click OK. And I get a black screen. Oh my God, what did I do? Did I screw things up? No, no, no. This is just the, just the first step. This is a blank scene. Now you have to add a source to this scene. And to do that, you your, notice your sources box has cleared here. Because unlike your default scene up here, it doesn't have anything in it yet. So I have to add a source by using the plus sign on the source box. And this is the only hard part about internalizing how to set up OBS. I had to watch multiple YouTube videos to figure this out, to really internalize this. But I'm going to try to show you, uh, I'm trying to save you that hassle. So I just click the add button and I have Again, my same options, video capture devices, display capture devices, media sources, and other things. Slideshow. Oh, God. No, I can't. I can't go. To, <laughs> I can't digress here. We'll run out of time. Um, I'm going to include this. I Love Me camera was a video capture device. So I click on that. And I could create a brand new one at this point. I could add a new source as part of this process, but I don't have to because I've already added several cameras to, oh, I've already connected several cameras to OBS. So I just click this radio button that says add existing source. And then I have these options. And the one I want here is the me camera. So I click on that and click OK and boom. So now this scene contains just the me camera instead of all these. It's just me. And I just keep going. I'll make it, I like to make a scene for each, a single source scene for each of my sources. So the next one I'm going to do is the um, lake camera. And uh, I called it lake camera, I think, so I'm going to have to do something like lake cam. It can't be the exact same name. We'll see if I remember. Yeah, that worked. It took that. And now I can add a source. It's a, ca a, a camera, a video capture device. So I click on that. I add existing. And there's my lake camera. <laughs> and I OK. And there's that one. And I just keep going. I make more scenes. The next one was my dock camera. And I call that document camera, I think. So I'm going to call this doc cam. And I'll add a source to that scene and add existing. And there's my document camera. And I'll just do that for all the cameras. Let's see. Uh, what have I got left? Um, I love me Lake Cam, Doc Cam. That's it, isn't it? Sorry, momentary. I've got my me camera, my... Oh, the hardware switcher was in effect a camera, so I can add a scene for that too. I'll go back here, add scene. We'll call this... Uh, or Black Magic. Switcher, I think that's different. Yep, it took it. So I add video capture device, hardware switcher. Okay. Oof. That's way too good a shot of my bald spot there. Get that. Watching yourself on camera when you get to be my age is a little bit of a. <laughs> A, what, it removes all your illusions. <laughs> yeah, I see you smiling, Ray. 
Okay. We we just have to come to terms with it. Yeah, yeah just yeah, yeah. You you got to peer. You got to peer in the room. <laughs> All right, so there now I but I also have my display capture source that I did, so I'll make a scene for that. Uh, this will be display 3, I think it I think I called it screen 3 when I created the source. Yep. Add. And this is a display capture option. And my only existing one of those is screen 3. So I select, I tell it I want to use add exi an existing display capture. And I select the one I want and OK. And there that is. There's my, my that's my screen with the PowerPoint slide on it. And I had that media source as well. And that was, um, I'm just going to call it River. Okay. And I'll add the uh, media source to that. There's only one of those that I've done so far. But I can have, I can have dozens of sources. Uh, created or connected and make scenes for each of them or combine and well, we'll talk about combining them together in a minute and there's my uh, river I'm gonna set that up so that it's full screen so that covers that black so I know it's gonna show okay so I've got individual scenes or, or single source scenes for all of my sources and I can switch between them very easily now just by clicking on the scene in the scenes box <coughs> I don't have to run them up and down the list and things like that so this makes it practical to use these live but if you really want to get really cool I can combine sort multiple sources into the same scene. I can comp uh, the term is compositing. I can have a scene contain more than one video source. And this is where it gets to look like the evening news or Monday night football, you know, where they have a little um, instant replay window up in the right hand corner <laughs> you're seeing the sportscaster and the replay at the same time or vice versa or whatever this is where it gets really fun for instance let's make a new scene and let's call this um lake cam and me Okay, black screen. Now I can add more than one source to the same scene. Let's add my, um, no, let's do the, yeah, the lake camera first. That's an existing source, lake camera, boom. Okay, uh, that's one source. Now I can add another. Here's where the magic happens. Another camera, and this will be the I Love Me camera. I click Add Existing, and I click the Me camera, and OK. Well, whoa! <laughs> you know, OK, great. I I just totally overlaid the lake camera. That's not what I want. I want to see myself down in the corner, maybe, and then see the lake behind me. How do I do that? Well, I can click on Me, and the screen, the border around the video window here turns red, which tells me I can manipulate this screen, this source display. And I got my uh, handles here, and I can just click and drag that handle in the upper left, drag it down, and that other video was behind me. And that's how that's done. I can, uh, and I can make as many scenes as I like. Let's say the, the one that I use habitually is the one that puts me over top of my screen that I'm sharing with you. 
and that would be uh, what am I going to call this one? What am I going to? What two sources am I going to add to the scene here? See if we got the screen, situation. Screen and you. Screen and me. The screen and me. All right. Yeah. And in this case, since I have multiple screens, I'm going to say screen three and me. So I enter, and I can put me in i'm a video capture the camera on me is a video capture device it's the me camera okay there i am um and now i can add the screen three which is a display capture device an existing one select that select screen three okay well wait a minute <laughs> What's wrong? You've disappeared, so I'm going to bet you're going to drag that to the. You're going to be on top. Exactly, I got to be on top. the 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 source that includes me has got to be on top in this screen in this scene here. So I just go to the sources box here and I highlight either one of these, and I just move it up or down using these up and down arrows here. This is another concept you got to internalize. So I'm going to move the me camera up to the top, and now you see me instead of the lake, or instead of screen three. But now I can do that same trick where I click on me, I click and drag the me down, and now you see me down in the lower corner as a little person and the screen at the same time. And you don't have to stop here with things like this. You can make a scene that has all of your sources in it that display at the same time. Let's just call this multi-source uh, scene. And I can just add everything. I can add me. And I since I want to display multiple sources at the same time, I'll shrink me down. Now I can add the lake cam, any existing sources. I can put that up here. Make that a little bigger than me because it's a lot prettier than I am. Uh, what else do I have? I have my dock cam. Put that in here. And these are live scenes. So if I go over here and I start writing something on my document camera, you'll see this along. And that's a and this is a live picture of the lake, and this is a live picture of me. We, uh, so you got all these displaying at the same time. This is how they do this on the evening news when they're showing you people blowing up Russian tanks in the Ukraine and the and the screen and the uh, newscaster is there with it. This is how it's basically how they do this. They don't use OBS. They use a giant studio switcher that probably costs two or three hundred thousand dollars. And that has lots of capability that OBS doesn't have, but not as many more capabilities as you'd expect given the differential in price. OBS has amazing capability for something that's totally free. I, and far more capability than I know how to use. I'm discovering new things about it all the time, but I'll never learn everything there is to know about it. And I don't have to because it does what I need it to do. So um, in the con Dave, in the control room, that two hundred thousand dollar control room. Um, no, that's just the switcher. Yeah, I know, a but okay, but yeah, the, the two hundred two hundred million dollar control. Yeah. Room. Uh, they're going to see a multiple screen, you know, having been, having stuck my nose in there, they, they yeah, have yeah. something that's thought like this on the wall. And then they're just hitting, they're hitting the mechanical button to give you the preference, right. Of which right. cameras. Yeah. Okay. So here, here, what I would do is maybe if I'm showing these three screens and then I want to go to my document camera, I'm, I'm going to guess that I'm going to have to go slide over to ski, uh, document camera scene and that will then just bring that in. okay I, they, yeah, all right so i'm not really 
I'm using that box on the left right. to, to do everything. Okay, excellent. Okay. There Thanks, is sorry. actually a studio mode in oh. Oh, oh my goodness. OBS okay. that will give you some of that capability that you're talking about in the trailer. But I find it more confusing and less um, functional when I'm doing things live than just picking the scene I want, which is conceptually a lot simpler. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. So there is well, it's a lot to simpler. ask the person who's doing the presentation, you know, our, our colleagues that are listening to this. Yeah. You know, may not be as comfortable as you and I at throwing switches. So, you know, if you have to try to deliver the lecture and throw the switches. That is know. the trick. Yeah. And Doing, is, keep it, keep it, uh, kiss, right? Keep it simple. Keep it as simple as possible. And uh, what will someone in New York City tell you if you ask them how to get to Carnegie Hall? Ever heard that one? Practice, practice, practice. Try That's it. Funny. Try it and use it a little bit. And realize you can, you know, it. it's going to take a little getting used to. But after I find that after, after I used it a few times, the cognitive load on me <clears throat> when I'm running a Zoom meeting is a lot lower if I'm using OBS than if I'm just using Zoom itself. Primarily because I can look straight ahead of me at my primary monitor and I can see what you're seeing. Rather than having to remember which screen I'm sharing, which I forget still after hundreds or actually thousands of Zoom meetings over the years that I've run, I still forget sometimes which um, which screen I'm sharing if I have multiple screens. That's why I have a laptop sitting over here next to me, which you can see, um, if you want to see, if I go to the black magic switcher source and swing over here, I've got a laptop over here on the side that's in the zoom meeting that I can look over and I can see what you're seeing. <laughs> <laughs> and I need something like that when I'm using Zoom by itself to remind me what I'm actually sending out to you. With OBS, what I see is what you see. Yes, Ardeth, I, I hear what you're saying. And I know some of you have come to this presentation more than once. And I will guarantee you that I, I had to watch some of those YouTube videos half a dozen times before it really started to make sense. So this is one of those things that repetition really helps with. But the best thing you can do is just jump in, install it on your computer and play with it and make mistakes and learn from them. But once you internalize, once you uh, really get the basic ideas behind how OBS is working, like I say, the cognitive load that it, impl that it uh, layers over top of uh, what you're trying to accomplish in your Zoom meeting is much lower than, to me than it is with just Zoom by itself. Um, I have a question. Good. So when you're teaching and you've got this set up, you know, with three sources, are the students still all going to see that stuff at the bottom or how do you make them? Oh, no, no, no. They don't see this. They don't see what you're seeing right now. That's the last slide in the presentation. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> how to get this into Zoom. Okay, right now I'm doing that with brute force by sharing my OBS screen, but you're not going to do that when you're mm -hmm. actually using it. It's much yeah. simpler than that, thank goodness. Good question at this point, though. Okay, so there's hey, my multi. Hey. Yes, please. Uh, I can see that a document camera. Yes. But if I want to switch it, rotate it, is there a way I can rotate? Rotate the document camera. Yes. But it doesn't involve electronics. With this document camera, at least. And this, this is where having this pan tilt zoom camera comes in so handy. Okay, if I go over here, there's the document camera. Okay. If I want to rotate the image on the document camera. Yeah, but I don't want to touch it. Is there a way I can? 
no. Rotate without touching the camera? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. You, then. you just okay. rotate the camera physically. Okay. That's yeah. how that works. Thank you. Usually you want it in a particular orientation. You start out with it in that orientation and you just leave it that way. But okay. I'm not aware. There's no rotate control here on your OBS screen that I'm okay. aware of. Okay. Thank you. I could be wrong. <laughs> like I say, I learn things about OBS every day, but I don't think so. All right. Um, so I could keep adding sources to this. I could have every one of my sources um, displaying at the same time. Let's add that display capture source to screen three. And I can put all the other, I can put screen three at the bottom so everything else is laying over top of it. So there I am overlaying these other sources on my shared screen. And that's scenes in uh, OBS. So let me let me start now using OBS instead of sharing my screen through Zoom. Um, and that's the subject. Let me see here. We've done scenes. So to do that. I have to be able to send the output from OBS and let's go back to display three here. I need to be able to send the, uh, the out uh, and I do need my screen share here, don't I? Yes, I do. Let's get that right. Okay. Now I'm sharing my OBS screen with you again. In order to send this output to Zoom, All I have to do is click one button. It's in this control menu over here on the right. Actually, there's two things I have to do, but the, as far as from the standpoint of OBS, to send whatever you see in your OBS preview window to Zoom as a video source, all you have to do is start what's called the virtual camera. OBS didn't used to have this capability and it was much less useful with Zoom. But this makes it dirt simple to use OBS with Zoom. All I have to do is click Start Virtual Camera and it starts the virtual camera. And now let me share my Zoom screen with you so you can see how I get this to work. Here's my Zoom screen. My, um, host view of, of Zoom. And all I have to do to pull over the output of OBS into Zoom is click the, go to the little camera icon in the lower left hand corner of the Zoom menu, your, your video mute button, but there's a little video settings menu button right beside it with an up caret. That's how you choose which video source that your, can, that your computer has available that you want to use in Zoom. And I have now, since I restarted my Zoom client, I have an option to take input from the OBS virtual camera, which is already turned on. So when I click this, you are seeing what my OBS is showing and I'll stop my zoom share and you can still see what OBS is outputting. You don't see the OBS controls anymore because I'm not sharing that screen in zoom. Actually this... we see your zoom thing. Pardon? We don't see, we see your zoom page. <laughs> Uh, so you, no, you, the Zoom you also page. won't see my Zoom controls and so on. All you're seeing, I, I happen to have my third display set in uh, OBS. Let, let's take a look at OBS here for a second. Let me share that screen in Zo using Zoom, he said. And 
here's the OBS screen shared using Zoom. Okay, here's OBS over here. I happen to have Display 3, the Display 3 scene um, selected. It just happened to be the last one I was on. If I go to Screen 3 and Me, and that's, this is, that's what you're seeing in the um, OBS preview window. Oh, and let me get rid of this Zoom client over here. And the, get back to my PowerPoint slide. So that's what OBS is sending to Zoom. Now if I kill the Zoom screen share, now, now you're seeing the same thing. Without the uh, Zoom menus at the bottom, you see your Zoom menus. And without the OBS controls and so on, this is the output of OBS. And as I change screens in OBS, if I want to show you me in the lake, I just select a different scene in OBS. And I can go through those scenes a lot easier than I can change input um, video inputs on Zoom. <laughs> There's my document camera. So I'm just switching through those. This is the display I use most of the time when I'm um, presenting in a, in a Zoom class like this with me down in the lower right-hand corner or somewhere. And using OBS, I can drag me around. So if I'm in the way of something, I can move myself around anywhere I like. And you see that in real time. So OBS is serving as a video source for Zoom. The only remaining trick that you see me habitually use that is not actually a, well, it is a capability in OBS, but it uh, involves a, um, an additional bit of physical uh, setup uh, before you use it. And that's that usually you see me just floating over this PowerPoint slide instead of seeing the background, physical background behind me. There is, of course, a reason why I'm sitting in front of a green screen when I do this, because it allows me to eliminate the, this border around me using a technique called chroma key, uh, which allows me to remove a color and replace it with another video signal. Remove a color in a video signal and replace it with a different uh, video source. So basically fix it so that any video source that's behind me in OBS will show through uh, where the green is. And that's called chroma key. Um, let me go back. A, okay, here's how we set up chroma key effects in OBS. And now I'm not having to sh change screen shares and stuff like that. I'm just running the PowerPoint slides and, the, and you just see the PowerPoint slide behind me. But it'd be nice not to have this green background. What I have to do is add what's called an effects filter to the source in OBS that has the, uh, the green background then adjust some settings very quickly and then add that filtered source to any scene. Making sure to place the filtered source at the top of the source list for that scene. So let's, let me share my zoom screen again to show you what I'm doing in OBS. I'll share my OBS screen I should say. Okay here's my OBS uh, scene, or screen, with the controls and so on. So how do I add an effects filter to a source? I click, I activate the source by clicking on it. 
make sure it's in red. You bet, Kathy. Sorry about that. I should have already had that on. Um, oops. Oh, I do need to hide that. The uh, To add an effects filter, I just... Well, the easiest way to do it in, in uh, OBS is just a right click on the source that you want to add it to. That brings up this intimidating menu, which fortunately you very rarely have to use much in. But there is a filters option near the bottom of the screen, at the bottom of the menu. I click that. And I have audio, video filters, and effects filters. How did I know to use an effects filter? I watched a YouTube video about how to do this. Hopefully, this will you'll be able to remember this. Gotcha, Kathy. <laughs> okay, so to add an effects filter, the 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 control buttons are very uh, consistent throughout OBS. I use a plus sign here. In the at the bottom of the effects filters box and I get several different effects filters I can use they're just all sorts of tricks you can play with OBS but the one I'm interested in here I've already named as chroma key that's the one that you use with green screen effects I'm just gonna leave it named as chroma key that's there's no reason to change that okay then I get well, boy, <laughs> that was magic, wasn't it? <laughs> I didn't even have to adjust it. No, you'll have to adjust, make some adjustments. Um, now, if you look here, I let me make this a little bigger so you can see it better. I'm just kind of floating over the PowerPoint slide displaying behind me. The green background around me has vanished. And the whatever image is behind this video source in OBS is showing through. So I appear to just float over top of this, which is the effect I generally want. The adjustments you are likely to have to make here are just the first two. You see these two sliders here. And you're seeing that, right? I, my laptop's out of the session, so I... Oop. Uh, my recording just finished. <laughs> One of my recordings just finished. There we go. Uh, from the last session. I like to record to the local hard drive, so I keep control of my recording. So that's why that's doing that. So, the first two sliders here. If I run this one back to the left, okay, no chroma key. Uh, if I take those, those first two back to the left, I got nothing. No effect. So they're labeled similarity and smoothness. And you adjust them. You adjust one, then you adjust the other, then you go back to the first one, back and forth, until you get the best possible result. So I'll start with similarity. I just click and drag that little uh, handle there. And if I go far enough on the preview window here, I see just a black or a gray background behind me with nothing showing. Here I can see that I'm uh, in, in, the, in the scene itself. I, I'm seeing that I'm floating over the scene. It's, it's working. And that's actually pretty good. I can try, and if I go too far, I vanish. If I don't go far enough, I get all this uh, sparkling behind me. So I have to move that over until that disappears. Then try this one. Nope, too much. Back it off. Back this one off a little bit. And just tinker with them until I get the best possible key. It helps if I, if I make this bigger. I can see it a little better. The keyer, chroma keyer, built into OBS is phenomenally good. But it's not perfect. It's not a professional switcher type keyer. So you may not get a perfect key. I never get a perfect key. Not because of technological, well, not really because of limitations in the OBS keyer. This problem would persist 
no matter what keyer I was using, even if it was a hundred thousand dollar switcher, because the keyer can only handle so many edges, and I've got fine, long, fine hair. So there's always a little bit of sparkling around the edge of my hair. I can minimize it by taking these first two um, control, first two sliders and moving them back and forth, but I can never quite get rid of it. That's one of the reasons I usually keep myself smaller here. Because it's not as obvious. Besides which, <laughs> nobody needs to see a close-up of me at my age anyway. All right. But I'm still of an active presence down here. You may occasionally have to, if you have a little bit of green cast to your features, you may have to adjust this color spill reduction, which is just caused by lights reflecting off the green screen behind me here. And it also slightly changes skin tone and things like that. So you can mess with that. You can play with the others. By all means, just tinker with them. But you usually don't, they usually don't have that much impact on the image. It's the first two that you're really going to have to adjust in order to get an active key. And then I can close that and I can just take it. Uh, a couple of caveats here. Uh, if you're in a situation where you don't have perfect light control and light changes over time as the uh, as the sun moves or something like that, you may have occasionally have to adjust the key because you may start sparkling all over or um, you may start to disappear or whatever. You may have to adjust the, that filter from time to time. You just go back into OBS and do that. You also have to have, unlike with Zoom, you have to have... A green screen. You can't just use your light colored wall or whatever or just any background and have this key or work. It needs a green screen. That is not a big deal. Let me pull up a web page here uh, again and here I am still in front of this. This is this is what I just love with OBS. I can go to Amazon and I'm going to go to my orders. <laughs> oh, God, this is going to be embarrassing. Uh, you're going to see what I've been ordering from Amazon. And if I scroll back a little ways, dog food and all kinds of good stuff. Here is a green screen backdrop. It's big enough for most circumstances. Five feet, by seven, five feet wide by seven feet tall. It's light. It's like... Half, you know, if you just a, weighs just a few ounces, comes with a couple of um, little clamps to help you hang it up, and you can hang it up on almost anything, either with those clamps, or I just like to use painter's tape, you know, the stuff that you mask a window with or a baseboard with before you paint it and things like that. Um, bl that blue tape that peels, it sticks to anything and peels off and doesn't leave a mark. It'll stick to this backdrop, and um, you can hang it up on anything behind you. A piece of furniture, a wall, a window, whatever. And get your green screen. So, and you can, you know, you can hang it up wider or taller as you need. You can put the si uh, landscape mode or portrait mode <laughs> you can hang it up any way you like. And it's uh, 15 bucks is all that costs you. And it's really light. It folds up into nothing. Happen to have it sitting over here. Uh, and of course, <laughs> I can't show it to you because it's green. <laughs> let, me, let me get rid of the filter here for a second. Uh, D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D Whoop! There we go. There it is. And 
I have a piece of the blue tape still on it. So this is all you need, really. You can pay a lot more. You can do something like this. Let me kill the share there. Um, I've got a professional quality green backdrop on a nice support system, sturdy support system that sits behind me all the time, but you, but that's way overkill, really. Uh, I was able to convince my wife to let me do it because I was making a little money doing this. <laughs> but the, um, but this will do quite nicely and not set you back a whole lot. I've actually seen it for less than that. And it's, uh, it's, even the the keyer in OBS is good enough that even if it's a little wrinkled like this and so on that you see here, it won't matter. It works fine. Just as long as it's the right color. And that is everything I had to share with you about OBS. And you've had some great questions already, but let me ask if you have any more. I'm more than happy to stay and answer questions as long as you have them. Thanks, Dave. Awesome. Oh, Enjoyed thanks. Enjoyed it. Coming, Can't man. wait to try. Can't wait to new a new thing to you know distract some additional time from. <laughs> all my life you know? a new toy <laughs> a new toy and it's and it's a darn cheap one too <laughs> yeah excellent uh, thank you very very much let me know how it goes we will do sure when people start using this i have one more question um Good. so once you um get the obs set up and then you turn and then you start teaching so you have it on zoom mm-hmm Am I going to see what the students see, or am I going to see, um, all, well, I still see all the controls? Um, OBS is running in a window, okay? So if you have a single monitor, you get everything set up with OBS. as you're seeing here. And this cascading effect is common when you try to share OBS screens in OBS, okay? But it, it works here. But you just get everything set up the way you want and get your, um, your uh, camera turned on, your virtual camera turned on. Right. And then you just minimize that screen. And then your student, then you share your screen. Uh, and then your students are seeing what OBS is sending to Zoom, as you're seeing right, seeing it right now. Okay. If you need to make a change, then you have to bring OBS back up and change it, and then minimize it again. You can do that. I guess I'll just have but to it's try. it's a bit of a pain, but it still gives you considerable capability. Okay. It's a lot easier if you have two screens and you have OBS running on one screen and whatever and Zoom running on the other, which is what I have here. Right. And then I can see my Zoom my OBS controls and Zoom at the same time and I don't have to keep bringing OBS up over top of um of the uh, screen that I'm my, uh, over top of my Zoom screen. Right. Now, if but if you're if you're not sharing in Zoom, if you're using OBS to send your shared screen to uh, your students, they wouldn't see you bring up OBS. But but you can't do OBS display capture shares unless you have two monitors anyway because you end up with something that looks like this 
well, you end up with what you've been seeing there, where OBS. We're looking at your chair, your uh, green screen. Sure are. I'm not, <laughs> let me give you my screen three. Yeah. You get these cascading effects when you try to, when uh, you bring up OBS, if you're uh, sharing your, um, if you try to transmit o the OBS screen with OBS, you get these kind of cascading effects. It's like standing between two parallel mirrors. <laughs> right. And yeah. uh, it's, sometimes you can get away with it, sometimes you can't. Bottom line, if you're going to do screen sharing via, through OBS and put yourself over top of it and so on, you need a second monitor for okay. easy use. What if you Indeed, just want it's a lot easier to use OBS, even if you're only doing, um, let me get OBS out of the way here. Even if you're only doing, uh, if you're not using display capture sources, if you're only using camera sources like this, this one, uh, you can, you can make OBS work and I can, uh, um, you're seeing my, uh, seeing me in the lake camera, but I could bring OBS up over top of the screen. You don't know I'm doing it. I, I just brought OBS over top of my single monitor and in order to be able to change my, um, source. And you can't tell I do that until I change the source. You don't know that I brought up OBS, but it's a pain. It, it adds to cognitive load. It's a, uh, Bottom line, if you're really going to use OBS effectively and um, comfortably, it's much better to have two screens. And it's just not a major issue. Seriously, try your local computer store. You could get a little screen for, uh, for not much money at all. And well, I have a laptop, and then I also have a screen. But I think... They're always showing the same thing. I don't know that I could actually show something different on the screen than the laptop. Yes, you well, can. That's why you're doing the it's OBS, a, isn't it? Uh, no, that that's not uh, controlled in OBS. That's controlled. Are are you using Windows? Me? No, Mac. Mac. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. I don't think my Mac's awake right now. I should have done that. There's a process for uh, changing the nature of how you use your multiple, your two screens in both Windows and Mac. The two basic options are either mirroring, which is what you're doing right now because you're seeing the same thing on both screens. Right. Or extending your desktop. Oh, okay. That's the alternative option. If you select that option, then you can show different windows on the two, on the two screens. And that's the situation you want if you're using OBS. In Windows, I can show you how to adjust that in Windows. Again, I'm going to have to share my Zoom screen or share my Windows screen here. Let me share that. If you that. go to settings, is that it? Or? Uh, on, a, on a PC, you go to your desktop. You're seeing my just my Windows desktop now. Right. Yeah. Right click on the desktop and select display settings. Windows knows I have three screens. And if I scroll down, here's my multiple display settings. My options are duplicate, which is what you have set right now, or mirror, or extend. And you pick extend. Okay. Then it's similar to yeah. on the Mac. Yeah. Yeah. And that, well, let me see. I don't know if my Mac's awake or not. Let me try this. Yeah, it's awake. Let's see now. I, to, I can share this with you through OBS, but I have to have done that first. Okay, just a second. Uh, let's select Blackmagic Switcher and stop my screen share. 
All right, now you should be seeing my Mac desktop, right? Yes. Okay. Um, that, this is a consequence of all that, all those cables and everything I've got sitting on my desk that I can do this. I'm also using the same keyboard and mouse with the Mac, or I will be momentarily. Okay. There we go. There's my Mac mouse. Now, it's in the Apple menu under System Preferences. Uh, I don't care. I don't want to do a software update right now. Get out of the way. <laughs> Um, and somewhere I have display, I'm sorry, I'm not as familiar with this as I am with the PC, but I'll find it here. Is it displays? There we go. Lower left-hand corner displays. You seeing okay. that? Yes. Okay. Click that. Um, and oh, darn it. I don't have a second monitor attached to the Mac right now. I haven't done that, but there will be an option right here that allows you to set uh, mirroring or extend extend displays. Sorry, I oh, forgot. Okay. I I forgot. I disconnected that other monitor from the Mac. Hmm. So it's right in there. You'll have an option to select extend the displays rather than duplicate them. And that will allow you to do tricks like what you're seeing with my, what I've got here, where I've got different things on each screen, different windows on each screen. And you can just drag the windows back and forth by grabbing the title bar of the window and clicking and dragging, and you can drag it from one screen to the other and back. Mm -hmm. Um, I need to make a tutorial for that, obviously. Uh, I will get that done and I will put it on the on-demand site. And uh, to feel free to remind me if, you <laughs> if I don't send you that. Well, thank you. You're a wealth of knowledge and very helpful. And well, make it very easy to follow. <laughs> thank you for that. You know how much of a uh, uh, compliment that is, being a teacher yourself. That's that's what I do. But uh, I'm going to I'm going to email you when I get that done. Mac uh, multiple monitor display. because you make a very good point. You do have to do these tricks with OBS. You do have to set your multiple displays to extend the desktop across them. So you can just drag windows from one, one to the next. And I've done a tutorial on windows, but not on the Mac. So great. Thanks. Okay. Always looking for new ideas for tutorials. If you ever have an idea or something you'd like to see for you or your students, please let me know. And I'll add it to my running list that I keep. All right. Wonderful. Thank you very right. much. My pleasure. Ardeth, you have your hand up. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. I know I can't wait to talk. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to use a docu document camera at the same time as my screen. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me share my OBS screen again. Right. So I have to use OBS, right? Uh. Yeah, if you want okay. to use them at the same time, you got to use OBS. Okay, got but it. But you don't have to have a green screen, and you don't have to have two monitors. Right, right, got it. So here's OBS. Yeah. I just I have to have both of the both the document camera and the um, camera on me as a source in OBS. Yeah. Okay, I have to have added that. Then I have to create a scene with those two in it. I kind of did that. Um, you said you said you wanted you and your doctor. Well, I wanted to use my screen. That's what I wanted to use. Oh. Like if I was, if I had something on on my can't on my screen. So you want your screen and the document camera. Yes, the screen and the document camera. Got it. Not me. Okay. I don't want me on there. 
<laughs> Trust me, I empathize. Uh, I, I don't need to be. Um, it's all right. I know how it is. <laughs> um, and I'm going to go to, uh, so I'm going to make a new, let's see, you are, oh, no, I haven't activated the share. There, now oh. you're seeing my OBS screen. All right. Uh, yeah. I'm going to make a new scene, and I'm going to call it uh, Screen 3, since I have multiples, you might or might not. Screen oh. 3 and Doc Cam. Oh, okay. That's just to remind me what's in there. Uh, that doesn't make things work. That's just a name. But now I add my boat, my... Uh, document camera. Yeah. To the to the uh, scene. Wait. There's that. Now I add. Oop, that's wrong. Wrong plus sign. Sorry. Now I add my uh, screen three. Wait. To the same scene. And I can have either one. You know, I can have them both at the same time displaying next to one another. Right. Or I could have one overlaying the other, partly. Or oh, I, I see. Have, okay. So I can, I can do that, or I can um, uh, like have this one full screen. Right. And this one's over top of that one. So, oop, click on that so I can move this one around. Okay. Change the size. So I have almost infinite control over how the two sources display. Right. That'd be good because it changes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and this is live. Remember this? Yeah. Is okay. So, right. And if anything changes over here on this other monitor, uh -huh. then uh, those changes are... So every, everything's live. All right. Okay. Did that answer? Yeah, that helped me. That's for sure. All right. Great. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks so much for coming today. Okay. Well, I'll see, I'll see you again. <laughs> I'll, I'll be here. I hope. Right. <laughs> Until they fire me, I'll be here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. And we're out.